I'm Dorothy Buchanan Wilson, International President, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Welcome to Conversations. La, la. Welcome to this episode of Conversations, where we have with us today is our special guest, Sora Dara Munson, who is the Chief Operating Officer of the Girl Scouts of Southeastern Michigan. Welcome to Conversations, Sora Dara. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're Madam quite Supreme. welcome. Very good. Um, we want to talk to you about your work with the Girl Scouts, and because you are a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, and we're a mission-based organization, mm -hmm. um, and the fact that you're now at another mission-based organization, I want to talk to you a little bit about today what that means. And so my first question for you is, how does your work with girls in terms of helping to build character, courage, and mm -hmm. confidence, how are you working and making a difference mm -hmm. um, in the lives of young women through your work with the Girl Scouts, particularly in your new role? Yes, yes, that's a, that's a great question. And I, again, I thank you for having me. Um, my, my career has been interesting in that I've done work in the juvenile justice system, in the adult justice system. I've been a funder of the, within the nonprofit uh, sector. And now I'm able to work in a position of preventing certain things from happening to young people. Um, for our girls, for me it's about the leadership development, the character building. Most people think of Girl Scouts as cookies, crafts, and camp. And, and granted, there's a yeah, tradition yeah. of those things that is, is very important in the history of Girl Scouts. But it is a 100 plus year old organization, you know, thinking about our relevance and what we mean today for today's girl. And I think about the phrase, moving at the speed of girl. Girls are very advanced, they're very knowledgeable, they're very resourceful, but what we want to do is put the right kinds of information in front of them so that they are able to make the right decisions for their future. So we're talking about the largest financial literacy program for girls in the United States, our cookie program, okay. which is seasonal. It is a revenue generator for Girl Scouts, but it's much more than that. It's about teaching marketing skills, it's about teaching, again, financial literacy, but the most important thing is financial empowerment. When you are empowered with the right information and you can market yourself and you can articulate why this program is important to you and your future, that to me is very, very critical. So when, you, when I think about uh, the role that I'm able to play at Girl Scouts and serving in Michigan, 26,000 girls, right. right, and nationally, we have about three million members. Wow. It's very impactful. But again, I'm able to think about the work from uh, a place of preventing certain things from happening in their sure. future, right? So I want to build girls of courage, confidence, and character so that they become women who inherently change the world as they become older. Great. Um, as a member of our sorority, obviously you've, you've, you're very involved and I know of your involvement. Yes. And a part of what we've always done is that we've invested in young people, specifically young ladies and young mm -hmm. women. And clearly that is the goal and mission of the Girl Scouts. Mm -hmm. How important is it that we continue to invest in our future, and particularly our future um, um, group of young women who are mm -hmm. coming through your system? Um, Madam Supreme, I think that is supremely important. I believe that um, there are many things that are challenging our young women today and they don't get to see always positive role models. They don't, they, they don't get to see what is beyond uh, what, they, what they're experiencing on television or what they're experiencing in school. So the work that I get to do is investing in them to believe not only in themselves and to, to have a very serious um, focus on setting goals but achieving those goals because that is what builds their confidence. Unfortunately, um, our children today, some of our children today, are born into situations that are not supportive of their positive development. Girl Scouts is an organization that focuses on pro-social behavior versus trying to combat anti-social behavior. And we do that in a way that provides a safe place, um, again, marketable skills, and mentoring. So people, so these young girls believe, see that there is somebody in this world who cares about me and my upbringing and my development so that 
when it's time for me to take my place as a leader, I am, am, I am prepared. So Adara, I know that you have a special passion for working with girls of color, and I know that you're, you're genuinely interested in getting more of them involved with the Girl Scouts yes. at a time when that may not necessarily be uh, one of the more popular things for them to do. How do you now move forward to make sure that that's a part of your personal mission? Well, I think that there's a way um, for volunteers to get engaged in Girl Scouts that's attractive to young women. Um, we know that we want our young girls to be prepared for college and life, w whether or not when they graduate from high school, whether or not they go to college or learn a trade or uh, some, some sort of vocational school, we want them to understand that they are equipped, they're inherently equipped with what they need, they just may need a little bit of guidance. Um, there are a certain set of issues specifically impacting girls of color and it, it's not only uh, what was happening on television and, and issues around the images that they see. Um, not only the images of other African American women, but there are images that they try to live up to that are just not attainable. But my work and what, what I'm passionate about, again, is helping young women understand that it, when you make decisions from a place of empowerment, you make decisions that support your future for years and years to come. and Year, and, and the future of those around you. Um, I think that there are organizations that have been in place for years. The sorority is one, right? Um, Girl Scouts is another for sure. over a hundred years. Uh, but there's a way for, for us to create certain partnerships that support girls of color in ways that I think that we haven't in the past. The, the fact that technology brings things to, to our girls' door that we didn't have to deal sure, with growing exactly. up and, and, and actually um, make forces them to make decisions that they're not quite prepared to make from an from an emotional standpoint makes it all the more important for us to do this work supporting girls. Great, thank you. And I know that this is now your second major nonprofit or not for profit opportunity in terms of your career. What motivates you to basically dedicate your lives to improving the lives of others? Because that's what you're doing. Um, yes. when you're involved in mission based work. Yes, I. I didn't know that this was going to be my passion when I was growing up. I was a, a, a fiery teenager. Um, I was a middle child. I probably gave my mother a little bit of a challenge when I was in high school. Um, but now I'm happy to have found the fact that I want to use my life to give a voice to those who might not otherwise have one or haven't. Maybe they haven't found it yet. And um, it, just, it just brings me joy to be able to work in the nonprofit sector uh, not from a charity perspective. Sure, I don't. I don't. Exactly. I don't look at this as doing charity work. I look at this really as investing not only in our young people but in the future of our society. Very good. What are you most proud of in terms of your work and 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 the mission that you're on right now as it relates to your work with the Girl Scouts? The thing that I'm most proud of, and and I'll, I'll try not to get emotional, when I run into families and young girls that I have worked with in the past and I'm able to see the fruits of the labor of late night phone calls, text messages, pep talks, all that, um, because they're texting me their grades and their grades are increasing. Sure. They're graduating from college. We had one of our mentees um, had the opportunity to introduce First Lady Michelle Obama when she visited Detroit a right. few years ago. Right. She has now graduated from the University of Michigan and she is actually in Chicago studying psychology. Oh, that I get goosebumps sure. just thinking about the fact that um, you may never know the impact that you have on another person's life, but the fact that I'm able to again invest in our young people really, really makes me feel blessed. Great. And what is your big picture role um, or your vision as you move forward in your new assignment as Chief Operating Officers of the Girl Scouts of Southeastern uh, Michigan? What do you see next? Yes, um, that's, that's also a really big question. I'm, I've thought a lot about why I'm here and what this position means and the fact that I have a grandmother who, um, I had a grandmother, she's passed away, who um, believes so much in education after having a fourth grade education and losing her husband at the age of 35 and raising five children, got her GED when she turned 73. Oh, great. And having a mother who is a two-time cancer survivor. And so the fact that I'm blessed to have women around me and who have, who have raised me gives me license to really think about my dreams and my life 
um, and the impact that I'm able to have on others. And really, when I think about when I think about the Girl Scouts from that perspective, it is for me about creating an avenue for more volunteers to get involved, for more mentors to get involved, because that then creates the vehicle Absolutely. for more girls to be served. Sure. Right? More more girls, period, but also more girls of color. Again, because when when you know you matter in the life of an, another person, you sort of you stand tall and I'm I'm really working to create the kind of confidence and empowerment in our young girls that we know is there. They just need a little bit of guidance. So it's about um, partnerships that really open the doors for young women. Great. Um, what does it mean to you to live fearlessly? Because obviously, given your work right now, you are a role model and a champion for uh, young women of all color. Mm -hmm. Initially, faith. Um, there, there are things that I want to do and that I dream about, and I have no idea how to resource those dreams. Right. But I'm not afraid to ask for money. Sure. So when I, oh, when, I, when I have an idea <laughs> that um, I think is important, not for me, but for the people that it will impact, um, living fearlessly means elicit, soliciting support from others in that vision and in that dream. I think that um, because of my faith, I feel fearless, right? I feel fearless. And so I'm, I won't be in any worse situation than I am if I ask a question and, I, and the right. answer is no. Exactly. But I have put that seed out there and I have made that request. Right. But it starts with my faith. Right. And one last question. I know that you are a very active member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, our paths have crossed on several yes. occasions. And, um, and throughout all of this, you have had very big um, career opportunities and big jobs. How do you balance your sorority life with your work and your profession? I've, I've been asked the question, um, what work-life balance look like, looks like, and I, it does, I, don't, I don't know what it looks like because um, I try to approach everything holistically, and I think I don't try to find work-life balance, I try to find harmony, okay. and so if that means that I'm working for the sorority at a time when I, I've, I've got to shut down work and really focus on that, then that's what I'll do. I also have a daughter who is very supportive of, of what I do and I take it and if I have to take her on the road she has to come with me so I really just try to create harmony versus balance. Right. Well good. Well thank you so much Sordara for joining us thank here you. in Conversations. Continue your wonderful work thank with you. the Girl Scouts and I know that we'll be certainly working together um, as you continue down your path in terms of making a difference yes. and building confidence and character as well as um, just in general improving the lives of girls thank across you. southeastern Michigan. Yes. Yes. and hopefully soon across the country. That's right. So thank you again for joining us. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for joining us for this episode of Conversations where we've had with us as our special guest, uh, Sara Dara Munson, who is the Chief Operating Officer of the Girl Scouts of Southeastern Michigan.